what would have happened if another Hashira went to the swordsmith village instead of Moichiro, or even Mitsuri, or better yet, what if only one Hashira was sent? Well, in this video, we will be answering just that. We will dive into each Hashira and talk about all the different scenarios, so stay tuned. First up on our list, what if Obanai, the serpent Hashira, replaced Moichiro? Well, from the get-go, the atmosphere would be tense. It's like static in the air. Obanai is all like, don't slow me down, Kamado. He's gruff. He's got this partial blindness thing going on, and he's totally not thrilled about working with Tanjiro. So they dive into this maze-like village following the demon scent thanks to Tanjiro's super sniffer. Now the real action starts. Tanjiro and Mitsuri are tag teaming against Hantengu while Obadai's stuck with Gyoko. It's intense, but here's where things get crazy. Gyoko pulls out this insane thousand needle fish kill move, firing poisonous needles everywhere. Obadai like a boss saves the two villagers but gets hit and poisoned in the process. He's trembling from the venom, but he still manages to dodge Gyoko's water prison pot attack thanks to Kaburamaru. Gyoko throws out this wild 10,000 gliding slimefish move, but Obanai just slithers through, chopping them all up with his winding serpent slash. He's on fire. Then he goes for the kill with venom fangs of the narrow head, but the poison starts to slow him down. Gyoko pulls a fast one, escaping into his vase and attacking again. Obanai, even with his snake-like reflexes, gets hit pretty bad. He's on the ground trembling from the venom, and Gyoko's ready to turn him into art. But wait, Obanai has this epic flashback, remembering all the trauma from his past. His family, the snake demon, and the whole shebang. And then his demon slayer mark activates, and he's back in the game. He dodges Gyoko's attack, slices him in half with twin-headed reptile, and then just goes berserk on him, eventually passes out from the venom. On the other hand, Tanjiro and Mitsuri defeat Hantengo. When it's all said and done, the demons are defeated and Obanai, after a few days, wakes up thanks to an attitude by Shinobu. On the way back, Tanjiro thanks Obanai, who actually shows a bit of heart for once and says, You did well, Kamado. Alright, next up we've got Tenjin Uzui, our flamboyant and fabulous sound Ashira, crashing the party just as Hantengu's head gets chopped off. And man, it's like a demonic piñata burst open, because Hantengu starts splitting into more of his freaky demon self. Tenjin being the boss that he is tells Genya, Buddy, go help Muichiro out, we've got the house covered here. And that's when the real madness begins. Tanjiro and Nezuko are getting their butts kicked by these demon clones, but then Tenjin pulls out his musical score, and it's like he's reading their moves like an open book. The clones, they're tough, but our team is tougher. Then, plot twist, the clones pull a Power Rangers move and morph into this big, bad demon, Zohakuten. And this guy, oh boy, he's got a presence that could make anyone pee their pants, even Tenjin. Just for a second, though. Zoakuten goes all out banging on his drum, unleashing the crazed cry of thunder death. Tenjin, quick as a cat, counters with his first form roar, cancelling out those deadly sound waves, and then goes all ninja on him with fourth form, constant resounding slashes, slicing through those wooden dragons like butter. But Zoakuten, he's not giving up. He's got dragons and trees coming out of everywhere. It's like a demonic forest party. Tenjin, now super serious, pulls out his fifth form string performance, spinning his swords like a deadly Beyblade, cutting through everything. But then he has this aha moment and uses his echolocation. He spots a tiny Hantengu hiding in the trees and shouts, Yo, Tanjiro, Nezuko, go get the tiny jerk behind the trees. I got this. Meanwhile, Genya and a barely standing Muichiro make a grand re-entrance. They've taken down Gyoko and Muichiro, the champ, is still ready to rumble, even on his last legs. He distracts Zohakuten and Genya joins the demon-slaying party with Tanjiro and Nezuko. And then, oh boy, it's like a demon-slaying fiesta. The two Ashiras are going toe-to-toe -to -toe with Zohakuten, and the other three are playing whack-a-mole with Hantengu's head. And just like that, boom, heads are rolling, demons are dust, and the day is saved. Moving on, what if Tanjiro met the butterfly-clad Shinobu instead of Mitsuri? Now, Tanjiro can't help but smile, while Nezuko, ever the curious one, is clearly fascinated by those fluttering butterfly motives on Shinobu's haori as she tilts her head. Taking a quick detour, Shinobu decides to give Nezuko a little checkup. Always good to check on a friend, right? Enter the scene's villain, Hantengu. The poor demon doesn't stand a chance. Now, Shinobu won't slice Hantengu at all. She would just poison him. This would mean Hantengu wouldn't be able to split into his emotions, and hence won't be able to fight. But what if Hantengu realizes this and starts chopping his own head off? 
Yep, that happens, and the four emotions are spawned. But Shinobu has the fastest thrusting technique that even outspeeds water breathing drop ripple thrust form. She uses a series of the dance of the bee sting, true flutter, and hits all the clones. The clones are instantly affected by the wisteria based poison. The clones then, in immense pain, start throbbing and panicking. Now, in a last ditch effort, the demons morph into Zoakuten and start going ham on our heroes. But when they merge into one, all that poison gets concentrated. So now Zoakuten is not just angry, he's angry and poisoned out of his mind. Zoakuten knows he might not have much time and goes all out. Shinobu and the others try fighting, but Zoakuten straight up overpowers them. So Shinobu being the absolute badass she is, busts out her dance of the centipede. Hundred-legged zigzag and goes toe-to-toe -to -toe with Zoakuten's countless striking trees. Zoakuten's probably thinking, is this a dance-off or a fight? But before he can figure it out, Shinobu hits him with her butterfly dance and dragonfly specials. On the other hand, Tanjiro and the others finally find Hantengu and kill him, saving Shinobu, who was barely able to fight against Zoakuten's insane power. So with the dust settling, the village is all cheers and applause. Even the usual stern swordsmiths can't resist Shinobu's charm. Now let's change things a bit. Instead of two Ashiras, what if only one came to the village? Well, the village is in chaos, demons everywhere, and who shows up? Sanemi, the wind Hashira, and let me tell you, this guy means business. He's not the type to wait around. Oh no, he's the kick down the door and start swinging type. And he's got this rare Marechi blood, right? It's like demon catnip, so he slashes himself, stands there like, come at me bra, and basically turns himself into a demon magnet. Now, Gyoko smells his blood and comes hurling towards Sanemi, but Gyoko is more about aesthetics than actual fighting, and I can just see Sanemi rolling his eyes like, what is this, an art gallery? Let's fight already. But Gyoko, he's probably thinking, oh, what a perfect addition to my art collection. But here's the thing, Sanemi isn't just all talk. The guy's got moves, and he's like a human tornado, cutting through Gyoko's weird art projects like their butter. And Gyoko, well, he's history. Meanwhile, back at the village, we've got Tanjiro, Nezuko, and Genya taking on Hantengu and his crazy clones. And it's not going great. I mean, they're barely holding their own. They're battered and bruised, and it's not looking good. But then, out of the corner of his eye, Sanemi sees his brother Genya, and it's like something snaps inside of him. The guy goes from angry to apocalyptic. He'd be all, this is for my brother out there. You demons are going down. So he goes tearing through those clones using his clear storm wind tree. And he's not even breaking a sweat. And the best part, he doesn't even need to activate his demon slayer mark. That's how badass he is. On the other side, Tanjiro and Ko are doing their best. And with Sanemi's hurricane of destruction nearby, they finally get the upper hand and take down Hantengu. It's like, in the face of Sanemi's sheer willpower and wind slicing moves, the demons didn't stand a chance. Next up we have Gyu, so he arrives at the village and right off the bat, you can tell he's not here for small talk. Hantengu and Gyoko, the upper rank demons, are causing chaos, and it's up to Gyu to stop them. Now Gyu's personality is like a coconut, tough on the outside, but a softy on the inside, especially when it comes to his buddies. He's got this inferiority complex, thinking he's always the one being saved. So this time, he's determined to be the hero. First up, he faces Gyoko. The dude's pretty unhinged. He's got these creepy pots and uses them to unleash some nasty fish demons. But then it hits him. Gyo remembers he's not just fast, he's also smart. He starts analyzing Gyoko's moves, predicting where the next attack will come from. And just like that slice and dice, Gyoko is gone. Score one for Gyo. Now it's time for Hantengu. He splits into different versions of himself, each with its own emotion. Gyu's standing there trying to keep track of all these Hantengus running around, and you can tell he's thinking, this is why I hate group projects. But Gyu's not giving up. He's tired. He's annoyed. But he's got a job to do. He takes a deep breath, focuses, and one by one, he takes down each Hantengu. And then Tanjiro and company enters, and it's pretty much going to be the same story as Sanemi. Gyu is going to hold off Zohakuten while the others kill Hantengo. But I bet this is the one Hashira you have all been waiting for. It's Gyome, the stone Hashira. This absolute unit of a guy arrives in a carriage that's pretty much dragged by the Kakushis. Why? Because the guy's so massive that one lone Kakushi would probably get a hernia. By his side, there's Genya, and trailing behind, Tanjiro. Of course, the drama's got to kick in. 
Just as everything seems to going smoothly, Genya bursts into Tanjiro's room and boom! Demon invasion! It's chaos everywhere. Tanjiro scrambling for his sword. Nezuko's ready to bust out of her box. And then, out of nowhere, Gyome pulls off this insane moves. He just grabs Hantengu's head and with one hand, squishes it like a grape. Like, who does that? But wait, Tanjiro with his sharp senses catches a whiff of another demon in the forest. And just like that, they're off. Gyome's got the village under control. So it's up to Tanjiro, Genya, and Nezuko to handle the forest business. Then Gyome shows up with insane speed and destroys Haganizuka's hut. And things are looking pretty grim. But then Tanjiro and his crew come in like the cavalry. It's showdown time, and they face off against Gyoko. Meanwhile, Gyome is dealing with Hantengu's clones, and let me tell you, it's like watching a one-man army. He's taking on four clones, bashing them, smashing them, and basically just showing them who's boss. He's swinging his chain flail and axe like they're toys, destroying the clones faster than they can regenerate. But then the clones morph into Zohakuten and things get real. Zohakuten unleashes his countless striking trees, but Gyome, cool as a cucumber, just smirks. He pulls out his third form, Stone Skin, and starts slashing through demon heads while deflecting attacks with his axe. He cuts through them like butter, but as he nears Zoakuten, a compressed sound wave comes his way. Without missing a beat, Gyome uses his first form, Serpentine Bipolar, throwing his flail and axe, and grinds right through the sound wave, ripping Zoakuten's head off in the process. But nope, it's not over yet. Zoakuten's head regenerates, and Gyome realizes there's a tiny Hantengu hiding in the forest. After an epic battle and some serious injuries, Gyome finally defeats Hantengu. Back in the forest, Tanjiro spots his sword and just yanks it out, ready or not. Haganizuka is probably somewhere having a heart attack. And just as Tanjiro's closing in on Gyoko and about to die, guess who shows up? A battered and bruised Gyome. But together, they pull off an epic move and finish off the demon for good. Hope you all enjoyed it, and don't forget to smash that like button. Until next time, peace.